Good morning, everyone. As we celebrate today, Advent, of course, we make a marked turn in the season, focusing more directly upon the birth of Jesus. The readings will indicate that. The prayers of the Mass become very specific starting December the 17th. And so uh, we know that we are coming close to the end of our Advent journey. And we look with joy, not only Christmas Day, but life eternal, we pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And may the grace and peace of God our Father, the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. To prepare ourselves once again to worthily come and celebrate the sacred mysteries, we pause to acknowledge our sins. Lord Jesus, the long-awaited Messiah, Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, King of kings, Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, born of the Virgin Mary, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, creator and redeemer of human nature, who willed that your word should take flesh in an ever-virgin womb, look with favor on our prayers, that your only begotten Son, having taken to himself our humanity, may be pleased to grant us a share in his uh, divinity, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. reading from the book of Genesis. Jacob called his sons and said to them, Assemble and listen, sons of Jacob. Listen to Israel, your father. You, Judah, shall your brothers praise. Your hand on the neck of your enemies, the sons of your father shall bow down to you. Judah, like a lion's whelp, you have grown up on prey, my son. He crouches like a lion recumbent the king of beasts, who would dare rouse him? The scepter shall never depart from Judah, or the mace from between his legs, while tribute is brought to him, and he receives the people's homage. The word of the Lord. Our response is, justice shall flourish in his time, and fullness of peace forever. O God, with your judgment, endow the king, and with your justice, the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice, and your afflicted ones with judgment. The mountains shall yield peace for the people, and the hills justice. He shall defend the afflicted among the people, save the children of the poor. Justice shall flower in his days, and profound peace, till the moon be no more. May he rule from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. May his name be blessed forever, as long as the sun his name shall remain. In him shall all the tribes of the earth be blessed, all the nations shall proclaim his happiness. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. O wisdom of our God Most High, guiding creation with power and love, come to teach us the path of knowledge. Hallelujah. 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 Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Matthew. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham became the father of Isaac, Isaac the father of Jacob, Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers. Judah became the father of Perez and Zerah, whose mother was Tamar. Perez became the father of Hezron, Hezron the father of Ram, Ram the father of Amadab, Amadab became the father of Nashan, Nashan the father of Solomon, Solomon the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Boaz became the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Obed became the father of Jesse, Jesse the father of David the king. David became the father of Solomon, whose mother had been the wife of Uriah. Solomon became the father of Rehoboam, Rehoboam the father of Abijah, Abijah the father of Asaph. Asaph became the father of Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat the father of Jerome, Jerome the father of Uzziah. Uzziah became the father of Jotham, Jotham the father of Ahaz, Ahaz the father of Hezekiah. Hezekiah became the father of Manasseh, Manasseh the father of Amos, Amos the father of Josiah, Josiah became the father of Jeconiah and his brothers at the time of the Babylonian exile. After the Babylonian exile, Jeconiah became the father of Shatil, Shatil the father of Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel the father of Abud, Abud became the father of Elakim, Elikim the father of Azor, Azor the father of Zadok. Zadok became the father of Akim, Akim the father of Elud, Elud the father of Eleazar. Eleazar became the father of Matan, Matan the father of Jacob. Jacob the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Of her was born Jesus, who was called the Christ. Thus the total number of generations from Abraham to David is fourteen generations. From David to the Babylonian exile, 14 generations. From the Babylonian exile to the Christ, 14 generations. The Gospel of the Lord. So, Jerry, you got off easy on the reading today, you know. And... uh, you know the key to pronouncing all of these names? To say them with confidence and you'll believe that I said them right. You know, I, I got most of them right. <laughs> Very important reading. Important reading for many reasons, but three simple thoughts maybe as we make that turn, as I mentioned the beginning of Mass, today makes a marked turn in the season of Advent. First of all, It's very important to note that in the genealogy of Jesus, Gentiles' names are mentioned, as well as the names of women. Might sound a little odd for that time period. Now, really, that is a very important detail, really reminding us of the mission of the Messiah, that Jesus came for all people. We need to remember that. And it is very interesting to note that um, we hear Joseph by the title that we use for him, Husband of Mary. He is not given the title that he was the father of Jesus. Everyone else in this litany of names was the father of, the father of, 
but uh, Joseph's title, the husband of Mary. And uh, why is that so important? Well, of course, because, as we would say, he was the foster father, the adoptive father, the spiritual father, not the biological one. And so we remind ourselves as we see St. Joseph, particularly in this year where we're called to reflect upon St. Joseph, the year of Joseph, that Joseph is that spiritual father to Jesus, not biological, and really indicating for us that God the Father is that spiritual father for us all, that we have that relationship with a spiritual father and God the Father. And then we hear about these two women mentioned. And uh, in pretty much every case, except for that of Ruth, there is moral questions surrounding their names. It was not exactly the, the uh, brightest list of names of, of the women of the Scripture. And what does that really indicate for us? And really, probably, for the church, especially right now, that um, although these names and the genealogy of Jesus, of these, of these women, were associated with sinful ways, it did not determine the future of Christ. It was part of the heritage, the lineage, but not his future. And so we need to really remember that uh, the sins of the past do not determine the future. And uh, it seems that the media is uh, stuck on uh, thrashing out the sins of the past over and over and over of the church. I think uh, you and I could pick up the Buffalo News and when we see the headline we could write the article by memory by now because uh, it's simply rehashing uh, all of those sins of the past. We don't deny them, I suppose, but they also do not determine the future. And we need to remember the sins of the past never define the future of the person. The sins of the past of those within the church does not define the church nor the future. And so as we look to our present moment, with the sins that have caught up to us, well, do we need to address them? Of course, but by the same token, they do not define us, nor do they determine the future of the church. The church has been here for more than 2,000 years, and uh, I dare say it will be here for at least another 2,000, and if we, the world makes it to that next 2,000 mark, then uh, for another couple thousand after that. So we should never live in fear when we look at the sins and mistakes of the past. We think about these things as we turn, we offer our needs and intentions to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we do come before you as your people of faith, knowing that we have that relationship as your spiritual sons and daughters in the world today. Please hear our needs and petitions. Help us on our way. For the church in the world, for all of the baptized, that we truly live as that faithful son, that faithful daughter, possessing dignity as that son or daughter of God, we pray to you, Lord. For the grace to always be able to look to the future filled with hope and never to be defined or held back, by mistakes or sins of the past. We pray to you, O Lord. For all of our college and university students, our seminarians included, who are finishing now the academic semester, that uh, these final examinations and projects may lead to a successful end of the semester and a, a hope-filled feeling for the new semester ahead. We pray to you, O Lord. And for those who go without at this time of year, those who go without the proper amounts of 
food or clothing or shelter to those who go without uh, family or friends to share the joy of holiday time with, particularly in the isolation surrounding this pandemic year, that we may continually look towards those needs of others and provide for them, we pray to you, O Lord. And for all of our world leaders to be able to work with one another, to afford the efforts of peace, for all of the elected leadership of our own nation to be able to put aside the many, many differences that divide us, we pray to you, O Lord. And for all of those in need of healing, those suffering with the coronavirus, for all those in need of healing in body, mind, or spirit, those undergoing, recovering from surgeries, those in long-term care, nursing care, especially remember Donna, who's uh, recovering from a stroke, and all of those who've asked us for, for prayer, for healing, and for all of those involved in health care, particularly those frontline workers who day in and day out use their energy, their talent, and risk, in many cases, their own health in order to provide for other. May they have health and strength in body, mind, and spirit. We pray to you, Lord. For an increase of vocations for service as sister, brother, deacon, and priest, we pray to you, Lord. And for the people of St. Gregory the Great Parish for whom this Mass is offered, and for all of the souls of the faithful departed to share in God's mercy and eternal life, we pray to you, Lord. Loving God, we offer you these our needs and intentions. Once again, we ask, please, hear us and help us through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we've received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands, and will become for us the bread of life. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we've received the wine we offer you fruit of the vine, work of human hands, that will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Sanctify these gifts of your church, O Lord, and grant that through these venerable mysteries we may be nourished with the bread of heaven. Through Christ our Lord, the Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all of the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. 
holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Son in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and all of the clergy, Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostles, St. Gregory the Great and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy we may be, always, free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, graciously. Grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Lamb of God, Amen. 
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Nourished by these divine gifts, Almighty God, we ask you to grant our desire that aflame with your Spirit we may shine like bright torches before your Christ when he comes. 
who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace. And have a good day, everyone.